once we've brought our file into 3D Studio Max, and so for example, we'll carry on from the file we brought in from Revit a moment ago, you'll probably find that you've got lots of layers on here. And these layers are causing the machine to slow down, and maybe you want to sort of turn stuff off, turn it on, look inside. Maybe you don't need everything on the inside of the building if you're just going to do an external render. Maybe you want to turn some of the external elements off if you're doing an internal render. So there's lots of different options and reasons why we would do certain things, why we would and wouldn't do certain things. But in order to keep control of these layers, we've got something called a layer manager. So that's available from just up here. You can see we've got the manage layers icon. I'll just click that and up comes our layer manager here. You can see that we've got several layers in the scene already and most of these are empty. We can tell they're empty because they don't have a little plus button up here next to the zero. So what I'll do is I'll open up this little plus button here. Wait for a moment. It's quite a large scene. And there we go. And you can see that what we've got in here is if I move this over and I'll see if I can open that up a little bit. Yes, we can. There we go. We've got a whole load of objects that are listed in here. Uh, there's the object properties if I click on it. So let's just OK that. So if I click on the little cube here, you can see there, if I just click on the name, that selects it. If I click on the cube, I'm going to bring up the actual objects properties and select it. So that's an interesting one to remember. That if I need to make any changes to an object, I can actually do that as well from the layer manager. But you can see here we've got everything's all listed in its correct name. We've got lots of stuff in here that I'm not sure what it is because it's not named what I think correctly. It's probably a part number to be to be honest. And but we've also got sort of references to mullions and the size of the mullions as well. And right down at the bottom we've got our new layers. Now what happens, for example, if I want to take this sun system, my lights here, for example, and I want to put them onto a new layer. Well, first of all, what I'm going to have to do is to actually select them within my scene. So I'll come to my Select by Name dialog here. And you can see what I've done already there is we've got the display geometry. If I turn off display geometry, all I'm really left with is the camera and the two light sources. So I'll click on the compass and the sun and sky because I happen to know that the compass is part of the sun system. And then I'll click OK. And you'll see within my 3D Studio Max viewport here down at the bottom, we've got a little indicator here, a little gizmo showing me the orientation the object is to the world. And I can also see that it's selected because it's white. So that's good. So now what I'll do is in my layer manager, I will say create new layer containing selected objects. So I'll click on that. And you can see now what I've got is a layer called layer 01 because it's a new layer. And if I open that up and I scroll down, you'll see it now contains the two sun and sky elements and the sun and sky and also the compass as well. So I can rename that. I'll say daylight system. And you can see now the daylight system is now listed in my layer list. It's got a little tick saying that it's the current layer, so I'll make my zero layer the current layer. But if I want to, now notice, watch this, you'll see that you've got the icon here showing you the compass for the daylight system. I can hide that layer. There you go, it disappears. Or I can leave it on the screen, and if I try and select the elements, I can click, sorry, I can press freeze, and you can see here it's turned to a different color and it's become frozen, so now I cannot select anything that was on that layer. I've also got an option to make it non-renderable, which is a little bit silly since it's a, a helper and isn't renderable anyway. And I can change the colour of the layer and I can also exclude it from any radiosity calculations. This, the rendering and the radiosity is more to do with if you've got a, uh, a piece of geometry. So say for example you've got a large building and you've split out some of the walls because they're interior walls and you don't need to worry about them and you're doing an exterior render. So what you might do is you might just say well I want to keep them visible in my viewport but I don't want them to render. So I'll click off, uh, well, let's say we've got exterior wall here, I'll click off that layer and I'll say not part of the radiosity calculation. So I'm going to speed up my calculations and my render time by doing that. 
So as you can see, it's a fairly simple, fairly easy to use interface. There's nothing too desperate about it. Um, you can't really create filters with it. Um, we've got in here, we can hide and unhide all layers. We can freeze and unfreeze all layers if you want to. They're all fairly straightforward. If I've got an element that I've selected within my scene, say this base here, I can always press this plus button and add it to the selected layer. So you can see we now have floor concrete. So that object is now selected to my, or now um, added to my daylight system. And really it's as simple as that. There isn't much to worry about it. Um, it's not like what you've got in AutoCAD where you can create filters and, and so on and so forth. It is just literally here is an object, we'll bung it on a layer and we'll filter it out. We'll either turn it on or turn it off. So nothing really to worry about here. Another way of controlling objects is through their properties dialog. So because we've got quite a large scene here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly right click on this object and say isolate selected. And I'll move that down there. And that's going to make things a little bit easier for me to see with this object. So now I've got this object all on its own, I can start to maybe look at its properties. To get to, get to an, an object's properties, I can do so in one of two ways. I can either say edit object properties from our drop down menus here or I can right click on the object and from the quad menu that appears I can say object properties it does exactly the same thing now with this if I'm working with um, lots of elements and I need to be able to see through them sometimes what I can do is I can freeze them and I can also make them see through now that won't come into effect until I press OK. And you can see there the object is actually, although it doesn't look it, it is in fact see-through. OK, if I was to put another object in my scene, so let's put an object here, you can see now I can actually see that object through what I just made um, see-through. So I'll right, I'll select it, I'll right click it again, I'll go to object properties and I'll turn off the see-through, otherwise it'll be a problem to us. Um, pretty much that's about the only thing I'm ever really going to do in here. Uh, I might if I'm animating click on trajectory. Um, as far as the rendering control is concerned, I can actually make it completely non-renderable. So I can see it in my viewport, but I won't render it in my, in my renderer. Another thing that I will pay attention to here is the G buffer, the object ID. We're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, when we come through to doing rendering and sort of the final sections of, of our work. But bear in mind that that G buffer object ID is very, very important to our post process compositing. I can also turn on motion blur if I'm animating. Uh, and motion blur is really the effect you get when you, you film a car going past you very quickly and you get that kind of blurriness as it goes from left to right and we can turn that on on objects in order to make them make the rendering look more realistic. Other things I've got up here are little tabs at the top so I've got advanced lighting. If I want to I can tell uh, my object to not cast shadows or not to receive illumination. Again for certain elements within your scene that can actually speed up the render time provided of course it doesn't um, get in the way of the quality. I have similar options here with my mental ray I can exclude elements from caustic calculations and caustics are really the way that light bends through either glass or water um, so sometimes you'll, you'll have that in a scene but you'll have elements like a wall or a floor that won't be affected by that so you can tell those objects to just be not used in the calculations again that will speed up things quite a lot I do have user defined properties in here per object that I can use but again really in 14 years I've never really had much use for those so I'm you know I think it's more at a programming level you can use those. So we've got different objects, uh, different elements here we can change in the object properties as you can see I can show the object's trajectory if it's being animated I can make it see through. If I want to I can speed up the display by just showing it as a box. Now obviously what I'm seeing there is just the bounding extents of the object. I'm not actually seeing a huge amount of detail and if I did that on an entire model all you would see is a collection of wireframe boxes and it becomes a little bit difficult to tell what's what. So I'll turn that off for the moment, I'll leave it as it is, and I will exit my isolation mode to bring me back to the original model.